Good afternoon and welcome everybody to today's webcast. My name is Lee Langford, I'm a research director at Harris Interactive and I'll be your host today as we showcase insights from the latest wave of social life, our UK social media tracker. The webcast today will last about 40 minutes. If you have any questions for us whilst I'm talking, please type them into the comments box on your screen and my colleague and co-author Mark Baldwin will try to respond to any questions as they come up. And we'll come back to you straight after the broadcast today to follow up any outstanding points that you raise. For those of you joining us today for the first time, Social Life is the most comprehensive tracker of UK social media use that there is. Each quarter, we speak to a very large and representative sample of online UK social media users. And we ask which sites are they aware of, which do they use, how often do they use them, for what purposes, and which devices they use, and so on and so forth. In Social Life 2, we spoke to 5,500 social media users aged between 11 and 95. This is a slight change from the first wave of Social Life when we spoke to 16 year olds and above. Fieldwork closed on Wave 2 about a month ago, and when we benchmark Social Life 2 with findings from Wave 1, we're looking at how things have changed in the last six months between March and September. A final thing to bear in mind before we get started is that our teams in France and in Germany are also conducting similar research right now. So there's potential for cross-market comparisons for organisations that have a European footprint. Please get in touch with us if this is something that you'd be interested in discussing. So, other than the addition of 500 kids aged 11 to 15, what's new about Social Life 2? Well, firstly, we've expanded the set of questions that we ask to profile social media use so we can now measure which sites are used on a daily basis, for example. We've asked which sites people consider to be most important in their lives and why. And we've asked for views about which sites are on the up and which are losing traction. And we've quantified how social media use compares to use of other media. Specific topics we've explored this time include how we feel about celebrities using social media to promote products and services, social media bullying and bash tagging. And for a bit of fun, we've asked about live TV tweeting as well. We've again used a broad definition of social media in Social Life 2 with 22 different sites, ranging from those we hear a lot about, like Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, to newer sites like Vine, and also included are the likes of Spotify and Xbox Live, which are perhaps better known for other functions that do have a social element to them. And in Social Life 2, we've added sites that have come to public attention more during 2013, such as Snapchat and Ask FM. If you don't recognise all of these names, don't worry, because as you will see, most UK social media users are only aware of the more popular sites too. Now, before getting into the numbers, it's worth highlighting that the UK social media story is still very much about the dominance of Facebook. Facebook's the site that we're most familiar with. It's the site that most of us use most, of, most often and most of the time. It's the most important site. It's the site that we're most likely to use for work purposes. The site we're most likely to use to complain about service providers. And also it's the site that we're most likely to be bullied on too. But there's a lot more to UK social media than Facebook, of course. Let's start by looking at aided awareness of some of the more established as well as the up and coming sites. We're tracking against March here, so we have to exclude 11 to 15 year olds just for now. Now there have been sizable increases in name recognition for a number of sites, including Instagram, which is up by 14%, and Pinterest, which is up by 9%. Vine is growing rapidly from a low base. It's up 400% since March, but note that it's still at a relatively low absolute level at just 16% awareness. Ask FM, which has had lots of rather negative publicity during 2013, is familiar to 40% of UK consumers. This is significantly higher than fast emerging and hot news Snapchat, which is just 23% of UK consumers have heard of. Now, Snapchat has received lots of media coverage throughout 2013 and lots very recently. 
But as we've just seen, there's still only relatively low awareness of this site. This tweet here from Gary Lineker correctly highlights that we're not really looking at the proper target audience if we only look at 16 year olds and above, as we just did. So, can we assume that most younger social media users are familiar with Snapchat? Well, Snapchat awareness is higher among 11 to 24 year olds, but the majority of this younger demographic don't recognize the Snapchat name either. We've included a few other sites here for context. Instagram has got higher name recognition generally than Snapchat, and this holds up through to people in their mid 40s before then tailing off somewhat. LinkedIn, as might be anticipated, is one of the few sites we profiled that has higher name recognition among over 24s. Established sites like Facebook and Twitter are by now familiar to most age groups in equal measure. Next, we can look at which sites consumers have an account with. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean that they're active users of these sites, however, just that they're signed up to them. Active use we'll come on to look at shortly. And there's been very little growth in site membership in the last six months, with what I'll be referring to as the big four sites, that's Facebook, YouTube, Twitter and Google+, all static on this metric. Instagram again shows strongest growth, up by 3% since March. Now the 16% of online consumers who did not have an account with any of these sites were screened out of our survey at this point. And what this means is that the overall incidence of online consumers having at least one social media account is 84%. And this is 3% lower than in March when the total incidence stood at 87%, suggesting that social media usage has now reached a plateau and it may be declining among older consumers in particular. Bebo, Ask.fm, MySpace and Friends Reunited top the list of sites that social media users have stopped using in recent months. Next, we come to look at active use of social media. We define this as having used a site at least once in the last 30 days. Whereas we saw very little change in site membership in the last six months, and in fact a slight decline at the overall level, we see clearly here that social media users are now making greater active use of the sites that they're signed up to. In other words, they're being more selective in the sites that they choose to use. All four of the top sites see active growth increases, most significantly in the case of Google+, which is up from 13% to 18%. Now, if we look at where this growth in active use has come from, which demographics are driving this upward trend, in other words, Men and women are equally responsible. And interestingly, active use of the big four sites has fallen among 16 to 24 year olds, with the overall growth coming more from older consumers. Now we don't have time today to show all of the demographic splits that I'm referring to. Please get in touch if you've got a specific question uh, about any demographic or a particular group that you're interested in. And a much fuller report of Social Life 2 will be available about a week from now You'll be sent a link to this, or you can request a copy through the dedicated Social Life page on our website if you're not joining us live today. Now here, we're looking at active use data split out for all ages individually through from 11-year-olds to 75-year-olds. Active use of Facebook declines very gradually as the sample ages, whereas for most other sites, and again here we're just including a few uh, for reference, most of the sites see active use decline significantly by age. And we can smooth out the data by grouping consumers into age bands, as you see here. This also reveals more clearly that LinkedIn is again the exception, with active usage highest among 25 to 44 year olds. 72% of social media users are daily users of any of these social media sites. Facebook is largely responsible for this overall figure with just over three-fifths of us using it on a daily basis. Now this is a new, more granular measure of usage for Social Life 2 and we've included 11 to 15 year olds too here because we don't have any benchmarks from March. Females stand out in their use of Facebook with 67% using it daily compared with 56% of males. Males are more active on, uh, daily on several of the other top sites, in particular on YouTube. 
16 to 24 year olds stand out as the most active daily users of social media sites generally. Again here we are showing the full age trend for Facebook and a few other sites. Overall, 89% of 16 to 24 year olds are daily social media users compared with the 72% average I mentioned earlier, so, so much higher among that demographic. And we can now look at some more demographic comparisons, beginning here with the average number of accounts social media users have. So overall, UK social media users are signed up to three and a half sites on average, with males on more sites than females on average. 16 to 24 year olds lead the various age groups with around four and a half accounts each, and 11 to 15 year olds are also above average, not too far behind 16 to 24 year olds. And clearly membership of multiple sites declines as consumers get older. If we then move to active use of social media sites, shown here in the darker blue circles, we can see the male-female gap is maintained, males are the more active users, but what we do see is 11 to 15 year olds move into second place just behind 16 to 24 year olds. And now looking at daily use of social media sites. Males are again slightly more active than females and we now see 11 to 15 year olds ranked alongside 16 to 24 year olds. They both use almost two and a half sites on average every day. So let's have a look at some of the sites that 11 to 15 year olds over index on most in terms of their daily use. YouTube, Xbox Live, Twitter, Instagram and Snapchat stand out in particular. But it's also worth noting that 11 to 15 year olds are just as likely as older consumers to use Facebook on a daily basis. Now this contradicts some of the stories I've uh, been looking at recently that often rely on anecdotal evidence and are suggesting that younger people are moving away from Facebook in their droves. And Facebook's own CFO has also recently accepted that younger teens are leaving the network. But of course he's commenting on global figures and US teens in particular. Now clearly Facebook is worried about retaining its youth base and is willing to, uh, and is willing to act to prevent this. It already owns Instagram, one of the fastest emerging challenger sites in the UK as we've been seeing. And there's been lots of media coverage in recent days about a multi-billion uh, dollar offer to buy Snapchat. All very interesting. In the UK, I think it's more accurate right now to say that Facebook is beginning to come up against stiffer competition from other sites when it comes to the teen market, but it is still the dominant site for all demographics, young and old. And obviously this is something we'll continue to monitor closely as social life progresses. We thought it would be interesting to look at the extent to which different sites are shaping what we see and read about on social media. And we did this by quantifying the amount of original content each site accounts for. Original content we defined as the number of times sites are used for any activity over a 30 day period. So that could be status update, a tweet, a comment, uh, uploading a photo or a video or a blog, anything like that. And this is obviously an estimate but reveals that Facebook is increasingly dominant generating almost half of all original content in the UK and that percentage has increased from closer to two-fifths when we first asked this back in March. But as you may already have spotted from this chart, Facebook is not the site that's used most often by its user base. That honour falls to Snapchat with 25 original snaps sent per 30-day period per user. So who's posting all of this content? Well, younger people are much more prolific social media users with 11 to 15 year olds posting three times more original content on average than those aged 55 or over. So far we've looked at which sites are being used and how often but how are UK consumers actually using social media sites and we quantify use of 30 different activities on social life. Now, there's not been much change in participation levels since March, but these actions help to drive our social media segmentation, which is something I'll talk about in more detail shortly. The most common types of social media activity involve two key themes. Firstly, they're used for keeping in touch with friends and family. And secondly, for sharing content such as photos and videos. 
Now, the dominance of these uh, fairly basic social media activities, among older consumers in particular, helps to explain the continued success and dominance of Facebook in the UK. And this is neatly summed up by a 69-year-old we spoke to, who made um, the quote that you're reading now when asked why Facebook is the site that he uses most often. Younger consumers have come up with many other ways of occupying their time on social media. They like watching content, music videos, or movie trailers, for example. They like gaming, broadcasting their opinions to others. They like following famous people or brands, and so on and so forth. And little wonder then, as I read only yesterday, that social media is now the number one activity on the web. I'll leave it to you to guess which activity it's taken over, over the number one position from, but it begins with the letter P. Now, let's look at which devices people are using when they connect to social media sites. Of course, many consumers use lots of different devices to connect, depending on where they are at the time and which devices they have available. Portable laptops or similar larger portable devices like notebooks or netbooks are still the most popular device for social media. However, mobile phones are now not too far behind and have overtaken fixed computers. Mobile already generates 30% of Facebook's ad revenue and is likely to become even more important as consumers brought up on social media begin to dominate. And for example, 25% of younger smartphone owners who were surveyed recently said that they couldn't remember the last time their smartphone wasn't sat right next to them. The figures on this slide relate to all social media sites, but we do see demographic differences. So, for example, females are relatively more likely to connect with social media via a, a portable laptop, whereas men are relatively more likely to connect via a fixed PC. And younger people are more likely to use mobile phones and tablets to connect with social media. In fact, mobile came top for the 11 to 34 year old group. Older people are much more likely to use a fixed PC still. And of course, the sites we're using can determine which devices we use to connect or, or vice versa. So interaction with Instagram, Snapchat and Vine and Twitter to a large degree is, is typically through mobile phones. Pinterest, Google Plus, and LinkedIn skew to laptop use. YouTube is relatively more fixed PC use. And Facebook spans all devices equally because, as we've seen, it spans all the demographics too. We looked at the times of day and night that people are connecting to social media sites, and we benchmarked this against a number of other activities, such as watching TV, listening to the radio, for example. Now, obviously, there's significant overlap across many of these activities. There's lots of multitasking and multi-screening going on, particularly from six o'clock in the evening onwards. But roughly speaking, social media, shown here in the dark blue, consistently accounts for around 20% of the time that we spend doing any of these things. Social media use peaks in terms of its relative share of our time between midday and three o'clock in the afternoon. And social media's weakest grip on our time is between 9 p.m. and midnight, when TV tends to dominate more. Those of you who joined, uh, joined us for the first Social Life webinar earlier this year will hopefully remember that we used our predictive segmentation technique to create six distinctive social media segments. Social Life 2 has allowed us to update the segment profiles, including the addition of 11 to 15 year olds, and I'll briefly run you through just a couple of these now. Our segmentation approach takes into account consumer characteristics, social media behavior, and social media attitudes. And the names and sizes of the six segments are showing now. Barely social and, bare and social observers on the left have a very limited relationship with social media. Whereas the two we'll look at now, social me and social pros, are much more engaged with social media. Those who belong to the social me segment have a lot to say for themselves in general life and on social media particularly, and they account for over a quarter of all social media content, despite accounting for only 17% of social media users. Social me's view social media as a way of letting the world know what they're up to and what they think about things, even if they're not particularly qualified to do so. If they use social media to complain, 
Your response must be timely to prevent this from escalating to their large networks of like-minded people. Although they use Facebook heavily, and say it's the most important site for them, Twitter is an excellent platform for reaching this segment, this audience, um, as is Instagram, which they're beginning to use in greater numbers. Social me's are more likely to be female than male, and they favor their mobile phone for social media interactions. They follow brands and celebrities, and they love letting the world know what they're up to. Here's a comment from a 31-year-old female social me where she outlines why Twitter is her most important social media site. And if we now go to the end of the social media spectrum, we meet social pros. And this is by some way the smallest segment at 9%, but it's also highly differentiated from the rest. Social pros are younger, more male, more affluent, and heavy users of a range of different social media sites. Now, this is the audience that you're most likely to reach um, through Tumblr and Vine, for example. Here are a couple of comments to help bring social pros to life too. The longer one at the top is from a 28-year-old female social pro talking about her relationship with Twitter. And the more succinct comment at the bottom is from an 18-year-old male social pro responding to a question about why he's using Instagram more often these days. Now, if you haven't done so already, please feel free to take our test to find out which social media segment you belong to. The test is available to organizations looking to profile their customer bases. Please get in touch if this is of interest to you. It takes just a couple of minutes and the tool's accurate, very accurate to about 80% for those of you who are interested in these types of statistics. As well as quantifying social media use, we wanted to understand which sites are valued most. So we asked users to rank all of the social media sites that they use in order of their importance. Here you see the individual results for Facebook and they reveal that this is the number one site for most of those who use it. And here we've added some of the other most used sites to the chart. All of these other sites suffer by comparison with Facebook, as you can see. So if we apply this individual site data to the overall sample, we've got a very, very clear answer. Facebook is the most important social media site for 64% of all social media users in the UK. Does this differ by demographic? Well, Facebook is also the most important site for all age groups. YouTube's relatively more important to 16 to 24 year olds, whilst Xbox Live is number two in the pecking order for 11 to 15 year olds. But what about brand momentum? Which sites are on the up and which are on a downward curve? Well, firstly, we asked users of each site whether they're using them more often nowadays, less often, or about the same as they were 12 months ago. And if we subtract the percentage using a site less often, from the percentage using it more, we get a net figure for each site, a rough and ready feel for are they on the up or on the, on the way down. And there are some clear winners and losers here. Facebook, YouTube and Twitter are among the sites that we see that see reported use growing significantly in the last 12 months, along with up and coming brands like Instagram, Pinterest and new kids on the block like Snapchat and Vine. We also asked social media users to attribute various descriptions to nine of the social media sites that we profiled, regardless of whether they'd use them or not. Now, firstly, it's clear that there is a lot more positivity highlighted here in green than negativity in red, and that's for all nine sites. But it's YouTube and Instagram where we see the green outweighing the red much, much more. The other main point of interest here is that Facebook is twice as likely to be perceived as being for younger people than for older people. And this is similar to Twitter and YouTube, although not as extreme as the younger older response for Snapchat and Instagram. We didn't quantify how many people access their personal uh, social media accounts while they're at work. Maybe that's something for the, the next wave of social life. But it's safe to assume, we think, that the numbers are significant. A recent US survey put the figure at around one in three. 
We did, however, establish whether those in work are taking advantage of social media for actual work purposes. Now, although a small minority say they couldn't do their job properly without social media sites, for the vast majority, social media is for personal use and not for work use. Younger people, in fact, are significantly more likely to be sold on the benefits of using social media for work purposes. And the 29% you see here who use social media at all for work purposes, that figure rises to 47% among 16 to 24 year olds who are in work. If we factor in again Facebook's high usage incidence, Facebook is the number one site that UK consumers use for work purposes, ahead of LinkedIn even. Now, please bear with me on the next couple of charts. They do have a serious purpose, I promise. As some of you uh, may have read, Katy Perry has recently overtaken Justin Bieber in having the most Twitter followers, something stupid like 47 million, I think. Now, these figures are global, of course, so how does this look in the UK? For this, let's go back to Social Life One, where we identified the most popular UK celebrities across all social media. Stephen Fry came out on top for pretty much any demographic split we looked at, and others who came through strongly were David Beckham, and then several US pop stars, including Justin Bieber, Rihanna, Beyonce, and Lady Gaga, and Katy Perry. She's in there somewhere, but you need to look hard. Around the time that we were reporting Wave 1 of Social Life, there was a big stink in the media about a couple of soap stars, Coronation Street, I think, caught promoting bogus products on Twitter without using the relevant hashtags stipulated by the Advertising Standards Authority. And recently, Nike has been cleared of misleading fans in a Wayne Rooney Twitter campaign promoting football boots. So, are celebrities like Jack Whitehall here correct to make light of this sort of thing? Do we really care about this sort of thing? We, we decided to investigate. And first of all, we establish what proportion of social media users actually follow famous people on social media. The overall incidence is 33%, peaking at 54% among 16 to 24 year old women. So potentially, celebrity selling can affect a great number of people. Next, we ask celebrity followers whether they think it's obvious when something's been advertised or promoted by a celebrity. Looked at one way, the response shows that the vast majority of celebrity followers say they can usually or always decipher when they're being sold something. An alternative read of this chart, of course, is that the vast majority are not always sure when this is taking place. Next, we looked at the impact of celebrity promotions. Do we mind? And if so, what have we done about it? Or do we welcome celebrity selling? And if so, how has this affected our buying habits? Well, firstly, over half of celebrity followers say that they haven't really noticed this taking place at all. Now, obviously, it's impossible for us to tell whether this assessment is accurate or not, but it does indicate that social media users, by and large, do not think things have gone too far. And in fact, slightly more of those who have noticed this happening welcome it as get annoyed by it. So let's follow this positive train of thought through and look at the claimed impact of celebrity promotions on actual purchases. I remember from the previous slide that around a quarter of celeb followers consider celebrity selling to be a good thing. Well, a very similar number told us they've ever bought something that they've seen promoted by a celebrity in this way. One in 10 do so on a regular basis or all the time. And clearly this is a very significant number and one that will be of interest to many brands and I'm sure to the ASA as well. And it's younger consumers who are relatively more likely to purchase goods promoted by celebs on social media with the 26% who've ever purchased rising to 39% among 16 to 24 year olds. And what about the 21% who get annoyed by celebrity promotions? Do they stop following the celebrity in question? Well, we can infer that a significant number do so, with 14% here choosing to walk away from a celebrity they deem to have infringed. And again, it's younger Twitter users who are more likely to do this, with 14% average rising to 22% among 16 to 24 year olds. 
Social media bullying has been another major news topic throughout 2013. Facebook has very recently launched a bullying prevention hub aimed at helping teens deal with online harassment. And back in August, Tony Wang, the head of Twitter UK, issued an apology on behalf of Twitter to women who've experienced abuse on the site. So what did we learn about social media abuse from Social Life 2? Well, firstly, it's worth highlighting that the vast majority of social media users have never suffered what they consider to be harassment or abuse on any social media site. Now, that's not to make light of what is a very real problem for those who have suffered abuse, but this does put into context the scale of the problem. For most users, many of whom are daily users of multiple sites, social media is completely free of this sort of thing. Having said that, the problem is much more significant for younger people, with 18% of females aged 16 to 24% experiencing social media harassment or bullying, so over twice the average for that group. Now, so far in what I've shown you today, Facebook has benefited from being the site um, that is used most often by social media users. But in the same way that it benefits, it also suffers when we're looking at negative stuff. So Facebook accounts for the vast majority of all harassment or bullying suffered on social media sites by UK people, irrespective of their age or gender. And we didn't specify what we meant by bullying or harassment. This was left up to the individual um, to assess. But we can see from the actions taken in response that almost two thirds considered it sufficiently serious to block the person responsible. And just over a third reported the abuser to the site where the abuse took place. Very few, just one in 10, did nothing at all in response. And we followed up with those who didn't report the abuse to check whether um, they would have done so if they'd known how to do it or if the process was simpler. Now, interesting that overall, half said yes, they would have done so. And this figure rises to over three quarters of the very young in our sample. So it would appear that Facebook's Bullying Prevention Hub is a very timely intervention and other sites should also be looking closely at these numbers. And what about consumers bullying or bash tagging brands and service providers? We probably all know people who like to vent about brands on social media, but is this the norm? In fact, most social media users do not use social media to complain about service providers. And only 8%, uh, a real minority, are what I would call serial bash taggers. 16 to uh, 44 year olds are more likely than average to use social media in this way, but still only a minority of this age group do so. Facebook's the site we use most often to complain about service providers, and Twitter is also commonly used for this purpose. Okay, time to lighten the mood a little perhaps. Let's look at the still relatively new phenomenon that is live tweeting about television shows. Now, as a Twitter user myself, it would be fair to say that it often looks like most Twitter users are doing this at some time or other. But is this really the case? In fact, no, it's not. Only 30% of Twitter users ever live tweet about TV programs and only one in 10 do so on a regular basis. Now, if we factor in that only 40% of social media users have a Twitter account, these numbers shrink massively. So there's a clear correlation between age and participation in live tweeting, with almost half of 11 to 15 year old Twitter users likely to do so, compared with just 4% of OAPs who are on Twitter. There's an important message here, I think, for media organisations who use social media analysis to determine the merits or otherwise of their output. Yes, this is an important source of insight, of course it is, but it's worth remembering that the opinions expressed by what we know to be a vocal minority will not always necessarily represent the majority. The most tweeted about show is comfortably X Factor, no surprises there, and I must confess um, to doing this a few times myself. Live football matches are in second place, and then there's little to choose between other talent and reality shows such as Strictly Come Dancing, Big Brother, and Britain's Got Talent. If we look at different demographics, uh, the programs change a little, or the focus does. So for 11 to 15 year olds, Hollyoaks, Geordie Shores, uh, and Towie come into the equation more. 
Men are more likely to comment about life sport generally and also about match of the day. And the over 50s are relatively more likely to tweet about programs like Downton Abbey, Question Time and Great British Bake Off. Okay, so I'll now sum up Social Life 2 very briefly. Three things really stood out when I came to review the, the wealth of statistics that we've generated here. Firstly, social media may well have peaked in terms of its overall reach among online consumers, but we've seen clear uplift in usage frequency for popular as well as up and coming sites during 2013. And this indicates that social media is in very rude health in the UK right now. Secondly, although Facebook has retained its crown as the most important and influential social media site for all types of UK social media user, newer platforms are beginning to line up as more credible challengers. Instagram, Vine and Snapchat are notable for their growth among younger consumers in particular. And thirdly, mobile is increasingly the device of choice for younger social media users. This has implications for which platforms brands should be investing in as they build their social media footprint moving into 2014. Okay, thanks uh, very much for taking the time to join us today and I hope we've given you some food for thought. A particular thanks to those who posted questions. A copy of the full report will be sent to you automatically in about a week's time, so do look out for this and please share it with colleagues. The next wave of UK research will be fielded in December, so, so very soon. If you're interested in profiling how your consumers are interacting with social media in a bit more detail, please get in touch with us. And we do hope that you'll be able to join us for Social Life 3 in the new year. Many thanks again for your time today and goodbye.